start having moments rest these two um, I don't think there's much that they agree on at all I lost the track of it all but there was even about weapons of mass destruction and, and Blair and all the rest of it in the break anyway um, from one Prime Minister to potentially one in waiting Kiss Starmer uh, he's apparently put his foot in it he's been caught saying well I'll let you listen to what he's been caught saying shall I most of the conflict with the UK being outside of the UK arises in so far as the UK wants to diverge and do different things to the rest of our EU partners. Um, obviously, the more we share values, the more we share a future together, the less the conflict. Um, and actually, different ways of solving problems um, are, are, are become available. You know. Well, I'm sure he said uh, when the UK is outside the UK, obviously he meant the EU, if I did hear that correctly. Anyway, this is all about how closely aligned to the EU should we be. I do feel like when you listen to a bit more of that speech, there's this kind of notion that if we come out of the UK and we... Oh, are you ready? Ready? To toxic, uh, sensitive warning, trigger warning. <gasps> if we dare to actually stand on our own two feet, that somehow everything is going to collapse, that somehow Britain cannot be trusted to forge our way in the world. And whatever legislation we create, there's somehow this given that it's going to be much worse than the EU's legislation. And I reject that notion, actually. We should have the freedom uh, to define our own way forward, shouldn't we? Well, we should remember that Keir Starmer's the one who said that all that noisy squabbling in Parliament, that terrible, noisy stuff, is not particularly pleasant and it's much nicer in the EU. The unaccountable EU that the majority of the people in this country voted to be out of uh, and it's the EU, not Europe. Uh, and it's also the case that this is all to do with squandering this sense of independence. For 30 years, we've had bureaucrats that have not had to be accountable to, to the public. Precisely at the point where they have to be, some of them are pushing more and more to re-go uh, along the idea that we don't have to take responsibility and accountability. I think that the public are wise to this. I think they've also seen that it's been squandered, some of these opportunities. And this is the point, at the end of the day, we need elected representatives to be accountable. We need to, them to be responsible. And actually, we need to be able to chart our own uh, decisions and not be re-entangled with a whole lot of bureaucracy where people say, oh, I can't do this now because this is what they're saying over there. Michael? The, um, the problem about our being outside the EU is that if we diverge from EU standards in much of the, mar all the, much of the markets that uh, British industry wants to uh, sell to in the EU... Uh, then we're not going to be able to sell to them because uh, uh, they, 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 they require us, uh, if we're going to sell our goods in Europe, to meet their standards. So it makes sense for Britain to go along with EU standards. Uh, no, it's our choice. We can independently say, right, well, we'll scrap them all. Well, you won't actually make many sales in Europe. You'll end up having to do your sales elsewhere. It's purely a pragmatic thing. And I suspect now, the British, well, I'm, I don't just suspect, polls now suggest... Uh, that the British public, that Alan keeps going on about and keeps uh, maintaining he is, he's on the pulse of the British public, I, the British public are actually rather regretting leaving the EU. Starmer has caught the climate there, uh, and we will see what they, happens... Don't make that statement we, and start talking about Starmer. How do you know that the British public Well, you made a statement saying he'd put his foot in it. How, how do you know that the British and public... And remember, Ofcom are on your case. Answer my question. <laughs> Good, good. Do you know what? Good for Ofcom. We are regulated in the same way, and uh, there's a lot of people well, out there. Well, if they had any backbone, yeah. Nothing better to do. Uh, I'm not letting you make. Uh, you might be able to make these snide comments in other places, but you don't make them on my watch, I'm afraid. Um, we are well, regulated. If they had any backbone, we are regulated. Uh, if they had any backbone, what? If they had any backbone to regulate you properly. And I see no, that, that Mrs. Mrs. Diner... I've said that. Finish. Well, I did, did finish the sentence. Right. It ended with the word properly. Right. <laughs> I will be absolutely clear, right, because yeah. I'm not having this. I'm being told I'm to not move having on. this. No, right, I'm, right, I'm told, not having this. Don't right. be patronising to me, Michael, but, you, I kick you off my shirt. I'll tell you that for well, free. If you want, I'll go now. No. If you want to go now, go now. I'll sit and talk to Alan Miller. But, I mean, look at it. You, you will, two right, attack me no. non-stop. You're, you're not an impartial presenter. Uh, you, 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 you constantly... Do you know what? You're, you're behaving you're, like an adolescent. Right. You two attack me. I am going. I'm going. You're going. Right, well, I'll reasons. take over then. Well, <laughs> no, excuse me. I know you think you're hilarious.